Just the right hat. I could... You you want me to do the episode like this? I don't. I mean, I'll try. I don't think it's gonna work though. I mean, we can we can we can try. I, I, I guess. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> no, no. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike, welcome. Welcome all. I am Mullet Mike with us. <laughs> Paddle Gaming Network and Full Screen, bringing you creepy gaming. As we continue the season of useless gimmicks, today we will be discussing Zelda Breath of the Wild. I look like a moron right now. I've repeated myself to nauseam at this point. Nintendo always puts creepy stuff in their games. It's just kind of turned into a staple now, a trademark, if you will, a pillar of what makes Nintendo games so entertaining, even for adults. Legend of Zelda has always had some creepy stuff, whether it's going back to the original games, the creepypastas based on them. There were tons of creepy aspects in Ocarina of Time, as well as the one we've covered probably the most, Majora's Mask. All that being said, why would Breath of the Wild be any different? Also want to mention real quick, in case you didn't know, we have our own Patreon set up. It will be linked in the description below. If you feel like contributing to the cause for applause, then be sure to check out our Patreon account. Become a patron today. All right, without a lot to get in the way of today's episode, we're just going to hop right in it. Ladies and gentlemen, turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy gaming. <laughs> The Legend of Zelda series has always featured a few dark aspects. I don't have to go into great detail, but most gamers have experienced at least one of the many legends. Do I really need to tell you what makes these games so great? They speak for themselves. Today, we will be discussing some scary locations, disturbing occurrences, and creepy easter eggs in the series' most recent installment, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Real quick, this game went back to basics. The main complaint of recent Zelda titles is that they were way too formulaic. You gain access to a new area, you find a dungeon, fight a boss, and obtain an item to access a new area, rinse, wash, repeat. Breath of the Wild throws all of that out the window. Much like the original, you can now venture virtually anywhere. Past Zelda games have always had their share of creepy moments, ranging from the Dark World and Link to the Past, to the Ghost Ship in Wind Waker, to the Redeads from Ocarina of Time, to Dark Link, who first appeared in Zelda 2 and has pretty much stuck around ever since. You have the eeriness from Majora's Mask with the Termina Theory, pretty much all of Twilight Princess, including that one cutscene. Actually, I might have to talk about that later. Anyway. You get my point. It's Zelda. It's a Nintendo game. Of course they have inappropriately creepy content. Which is awesome. This brings me to Breath of the Wild. The game was released in 2017 for the Wii U and Nintendo Switch. This title was way more open world than previous installments. This title has the largest map of any Zelda game to date. So that just means more room for scary locations and easter eggs. Let's start with the Blood Moon. Much like that oh so familiar face that we know and hate from Majora's Mask, this game uses the moon to creep us out in a whole new way. This title uses an in-game clock to pass day and night quickly. Every few nights at the stroke of midnight, you will eventually see this cutscene. Blood Moon rises once again. Please be careful. What is it about the moon in these games? Blood Moon, Blood Moon, Blood Moon, Blood Moon. Nope, nothing about Blood Moon. 
Did they try to make it as disturbing as possible? At least this moon didn't have that creepy face like the one from Majora's Mask. The Blood Moon resurrects any fallen enemies, and they remember what you did to them. It basically resets the game's items and creatures. Other than the reset though, I wonder why Nintendo chose to portray it this way. This title features several references to previous games of the past, but let's focus on the creepier ones. I'm going to hot shot these first few and then we'll go more in depth later. Dark Link, a character who has appeared in several of the previous titles, returns in this game as a special armor set. If you go visit the aptly named Kilton, you can purchase the Dark Link or Shadow Link armor. But more on Dark Link later. For now, let's discuss Kilton. This guy loves his monsters probably more than you do, and he's not afraid to tell you that. If you want the armor set or monster mask, this is the guy for you. His mask actually help you get past enemies, much like Majora's Mask, which, yes, makes its return in this installment. The first DLC expansion opens up a quest for you to find and wear Majora's Mask. Other scary locations include the Lost Woods, Skull Lake, various mysterious ruins, the Demon Possessed Shrine, and basically everywhere else in this game. It's hard to express the tension one feels when you go into uncharted territory. In a game of this size, with this much in it, you never know what's over the next horizon. The Sheikah and their strangely out-of-place technology play a big part in this Zelda title. Here's a creepy fun fact. One of the game's original concepts was actually pitched as The Legend of Zelda Invasion, which featured aliens invading Hyrule, if you can believe that. Remnants still remain in the final product, like the Guardians or your Sheikah Slate technology, for example. I mean, come on, you're basically in medieval times with a tablet. You can take selfies! Being such a strange concept, I found this to be noteworthy. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, this finally explains whatever this thing was from Ocarina of Time. Seriously? What was that? While not making it into the final product, this game still alludes to this advanced technology being around for thousands of years. Since we are on the subject of the Sheikah, let's discuss the cult-like Yiga clan and the random encounter that you may face. The Yiga clan are a broken-off sect of the Sheikah. They see things from a different perspective. Besides their surface-level disturbing appearances, it gets worse. While wandering throughout the land of Hyrule, you'll cross fellow travelers. Engaging in a conversation often opens up a side quest, or at least it's someone to buy and sell goods to. One stranger will even ask if you've heard of the Yiga clan. Regardless of your answer, he or she will reveal themselves to be part of the Yiga and then surprise attack you. That's because the Yiga clan is hell-bent on destroying Link. This is a great example of how this installment continues to surprise you. Just when you think you're finally starting to figure out the game, BAM! Yiga death cult trying to kill you. Story of my life, am I right? Oh, how do I get myself into this shit? The Great Fairy Fountain returns in this Zelda title. Several fountains, actually. One will even revive a fallen horse for you if needed. That's because this isn't a fairy, but rather a god. <laughs> Wait, what happened? May I present Frau Blucher? This, my friends, is Melania the Horse God. Why this is in a Nintendo game, I have no idea. I get it. 
Melania can revive your horse. But couldn't it just been another fairy? Why this bizarre being? Here's another creepy fun fact. We all know the stables can be recognized by the giant man-made horse heads on the roof. But if you can get a bird's eye view, you can see the face of the horse god. Frau Blucher. Throughout my research, I decided to look up gods and goddesses with the name Melania. No luck, but ironically found out that the Celtic goddess of horses was named Epona. The legend of Zelda and disturbing theories go hand in hand. I mean, there's Link is dead, Navi is dead, Epona is dead, Tingle is dead, Squall is dead, you get the point! One theory that was passed around for years was the Parallel Universe Theory. Going back to the adventures of Link, Zelda 2 is when we first met Dark Link, an evil doppelganger made of pure darkness. In Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, there was a mirrored shadow world. Hyrule from Ocarina of Time had its counterpart with Termina from Majora's Mask, respectively. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds features a high roll and a low roll. The list goes on and on. This theory was finally confirmed by Nintendo when they released an official Zelda timeline. I won't begin to get into that because that would be like trying to teach physics in a minute. Wait a second. That's exactly what it is. It's metaphysics and quantum mechanics. Oh my god. Anyway, I digress. Many players have theorized which timeline Breath of the Wild takes place in. I'll reserve my opinion for another time, but you tell me which timeline you think Breath of the Wild takes place in. <laughs> Just from what I've gathered, it seems like most people probably feel that it takes place in what is known as the Fallen Hero Timeline. Interesting if so. I find it to be fitting. I will say this, the most disturbing aspect of this game to me wasn't the various easter eggs or theories, but rather Calamity Ganon. Evil won, Link failed, and Hyrule lies in ruin. Everybody you once knew and loved from past Zelda titles, all dead. Most games in this series seem more optimistic. Think about it for a second. It's typically the story of the upcoming hero of time, that of legend and prophecy. In Breath of the Wild, you're a fallen hero fighting for his redemption. We always look too hard sometimes for a creepy hidden secret, when really, some of the most disturbing aspects are right before us. We just tend to overlook them. Between the Blood Moon, the Return of Shadow Link, the various scary locations, the Horse God, Majora's Mask, the alien-like technology, the Yiga Cult, Ganon, and the Calamity right before our very eyes, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has done enough to go down forever into creepy gaming history. Oh, what are you looking at? Oh, hey, uh, that's gonna do it for us today, I think. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I am Mullet Mike with a pedal and full screen saying, keep it sticky, stay creepy. Thanks for watching, folks. Peace. Mm -hmm.